Look, there are three reasons why I shouldn't cover this, the Google Nexus 6P in exhaustive detail. Number one, it's now six months old. Number two, it's a Nexus. You know exactly what the interface is and what the app's already like. And number three, much of the internals are very similar to the sister device, the Nexus 5X, which I reviewed in phone show 265. So the same pros and cons apply. But picking up that last point, the Nexus 6P does improve on the 5X in a few regards. There's a proper speaker behind the top grille and the stereo output is superb. Let's take this to full volume. Right up with that for my Nexus 6. Even it's made by Huawei here. Terrific for media watching. Full stereo mix and decent volume. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> Uh, the screen is also larger, as is the device overall compared to the 5X. It's higher resolution and it's AMOLED and it looks gorgeous. Inside, there's three gigabytes of RAM, not two, as on the Nexus 5X, plus the processor has been bumped up from an 808 to a Snapdragon 810. The battery is bigger to it, 35, 40 milliamp hours. It all adds up to a monster Nexus, of course. A couple of beefs with the Nexus 5X do carry over here. There's no Qi charging thanks to the aluminium back, but I'm now prepared to forgive this as I've come to rely on the 3 amp fast charging on devices like the 6P and my uh, Lumia 950 here. It's just so quick to get topped up when needed. It doesn't even matter that there's not compliance with Qualcomm's quick charge system since the raw USB type C specs allow for even faster charging. Just make sure to use the right and compatible cables and chargers, please. The other remaining beef with the 5X was that the camera lacked OIS, present in Nexi since the 5, famously back in 2013. Google's answer is that the 5X and 6P camera is fast enough and with big enough pixels not to need OIS, but it's a bit of a cop out. In my tests, every OIS equipped smartphone camera, including the Nexus 6 actually, <laughs> kind of rang rings over the 5X and 6P whenever the light levels got remotely low. An infamous YouTuber, Jerry Rig Everything, has demonstrated how fragile the Nexus 6P is, or could be. Certainly you want to case it all the time and keep it out of the back pocket. Ted swears by these bug droid cases. Compared to the Nexus 6, which is made by Motorola, which knows a thing about durability, and you can tell the Huawei made Nexus 6P has mechanical weak points, it's true, and is incredibly hard to repair. See the iFixit teardown. But treated right, there's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't serve anyone well and live a long life. Speaking of which, I find myself in the unusual position that although I wouldn't buy the Nexus 6P myself, the sheer specs and future proofness of this handset is hard to argue against. When asked, which Android phone should I buy? It's hard to look past the Nexus 6P, as long as it's not too large for the person in question. But we're moving into a, a fablet dominated world in terms of media consumption and enhanced gaming. The form factor people are prepared to accept now for their phone, if it also means replacing their tablet and portable gaming screen, is definitely growing. <laughs> and being a Nexus, the 6P will get all the security updates first, will be upgradable to Android 8 <laughs> and possibly beyond right into 2018, 2019, all adding up to a smartphone that I have to grudgingly admit is probably the one to buy at the moment, at least if updates and security are really important to you. For the true geek, especially one who values the planet we all exist on, the Fairphone 2 here is perhaps the ultimate smartphone. That it's demonstrably not the best bang per buck, or indeed the prettiest phone out there, is almost irrelevant in light of the game-changing, unique selling point here. You can take the Fairphone apart, officially, and in a couple of minutes, with the full approval of the manufacturer, right down to replacing individual blocks of components ostensibly to replace something that's been damaged or has failed, but in theory, in theory, also in the future, to put in higher specified components. The back bucket shell of the Fairphone 2, neatly inscribed with Design to Open, is tough rubber, so you'll never need a case for this phone. You prise it off with your fingernails, and you'll see a couple of blue clips here. They're a bit fiddly, I've pushed them in already. Um, you then take out the battery, and the entire screen just slides off, surely the quickest way ever to replace a smashed smartphone screen. 
Moreover, this then exposes the underside of the innards, revealing an extra three separate replaceable modules for earpiece, front-facing camera and sensors, and 3.5mm jack for camera and LED flash, and for speaker, USB port, main microphone, and vibrator. Each of these is released with just a small crosshead screwdriver. Fairphone even marked the screws you're supposed to remove in blue, helpfully. What's really impressive is that the three modules, as well as the screen itself, are all connected up to the motherboard with arrays of relatively expensive pogo pins, spring-loaded and designed to withstand repeated depression and release. In other words, you can take this thing apart as much as you want, and you won't ever wear anything out. The modules plus the screen are all available online on Fa at Fairphone's site, ranging from $22 for the bottom speaker mic module to under $100 for a new screen. So if you're forever dropping and damaging smartphones, then at least you can affect DIY repair with zero risk of breaking anything. Also worth mentioning is a special expansion array of pogo pins on the back under the cover, opening the way to third party replacement backs with extra capabilities, all very reminiscent of the old Yolo phones for which replacement other halves never really showed up. Always an interesting idea though. The other unique selling point, as hinted in the name, is that Fairphone sources as much as possible of the raw materials for its devices from fairly traded, sustainable and conflict-free sources. Add in the, the green feature of not having to throw away the smartphone soon because it could be repaired and even improved over time, and you have a very interesting proposition. Of course, the next question is whether the Fairphone 2 is good enough to warrant keeping and repairing it for a long time. And here the jury's out. The specifications are Nexus 5 level, a 1080p IPS LCD screen. And yes, by the way, this is what happens when you take the battery out to fiddle around. It has to re-upgrade Android all over again, or at least optimise it. That sucks. It has a 1080p LCD screen, a Snapdragon 801 chipset, 2 gig of RAM and 32 gig of storage, though plus micro SD. There's a capable, though ultimately unspectacular, 8 megapixel stills camera with LED flash to these samples. As usual with the stock Android camera application, you'll be making a lot of use of the Auto HDR Plus facility in order to get photos that really stand out, but I had no complaints overall. There's also a decent 2 megapixel front facing camera. You also get an FM radio and dual SIM capability as standard, and with all the parts swapping facility, it's easy to see that the Fairphone 2 is not only kind to developing countries, it's also aimed at them too. Android 5.1 with virtually stock interface and apps rounds out a very competent smartphone. If the build and the design was standard, then I'd estimate this phone to need to be priced well below 300 euros in the 2016 smartphone climate. Now, the Fairphone 2 is currently 525 euros, which means you're paying over 200 euros, about 150 pound in UK money, for the repairability and conflict-free credentials. Gulp. They say you can't put a price on integrity or conscience, but I think Fairphone just has. Comments welcome. How important are the Fairphone 2's unique selling points to you? Although the interface is essentially stock Android, there are some additions worth noting. The launcher is new, with frequent contacts off to one side and recently and commonly used applications off to the other, but you can put on whatever launcher you want, of course, including Google's own. Plus, there's a privacy impact intermediate dialogue which pops up when first starting a third-party application, pointing out what it has permission to do and double-checking with the newbie user whether this is okay. There's also the chance to block notifications at this stage, all very handy and a nice idea. Although applications should behave as on a Nexus, in fact photos for one, bizarrely, kept misbehaving when trying to zoom and generally manipulate images, there are clearly some stability issues for Fairphone to fix. Everything's based on the Android open source project, though with all the Google apps licensed. In addition to the launch, you'll also probably want to put on the Swipe Aware Google Keyboard since the AOSP version here doesn't go quite far enough or have the full range of bells and whistles. The only third-party application shipped is iFixit here, somewhat bizarrely, though I guess an app dedicated to helping you tear down and repair stuff is actually a pretty good fit here, so why the heck not? And if you're interested, iFixit gave the Fairphone 2 an unprecedented 10 out of 10 repairability score. By comparison, most of today's sealed flagships are down in the 3 out of 10 region. 
Aside from the price, I do have one complaint about the Fairphone 2. You can probably spot it here at the bottom. The rubber shell and back is a right pain to get on cleanly. There's always a little corner or two that's not quite on. And then you have to lever the rubber lip over with something small. I'm off to get my jeweler's screwdriver in a moment. It's annoying considering how easy everything else is. Maybe it's something that can be fixed by adjusting tolerances at Fairphone's end. This, this is really dicey. I know it's Gorilla Glass 3, but I'm sorry, Fairphone. You've got to rethink this rubber lip. There we go. <laughs> oh, and stick a few spare screws in the box, Fairphone. It's insanely easy to lose the tiny little things when taking the modules out. Look, the Fairphone 2 is a competent 5-inch screen Android smartphone, albeit with specs from a couple of years ago. You have to really, really fancy the idea of easy repairs and modularity, though, since at the time of writing, this is more than 100 euros more than a Nexus 5X or an LG G4, to name but two phones, which are far, far higher spec. Personally, I'd love to support the Fairphone Vision by buying into their device line, but they've got to either A, bring the price down, B, offer a range of premium modules with higher capabilities, or C, offer something extra in line with their ethics. For example, buy the Fairphone 2 and you're also paying for a drinking well in the third world, or something like that, or a combination of all three. This is the Fairphone 2.